Welcome to our 2022 Wildwood FSX 179 DBKX. Start right in the back bumper here, so if you pull that guy off of there, inside of the back bumper you're gonna find your sewer hose. Just take note of those two ears and the adapter here that's all be hooking it up to your sewer system. And the hose itself, once fully extended, is about 20 feet long. Just keeping it stored in the back bumper here, back here, just to help keep any sort of stench out of the unit, keep things up a bit fresher for you. And that cap just presses back into place. Right up top here, you got a cable and satellite inlet. It's just a coax cable is going to plug into there. It'll fire up your TV location. Down from there, you're going to find your stabilizer jack here. So what it's going to do is just going to run down, contact the ground, give it another turn or so just to firm it up, and that'll just get rid of any sort of bouncer sway that you see you got in the unit right now. Keep things firm while you're out camping. Up from them, you're going to find your low point drains there. So just the capsule unthread, screw out of there, and just allow the water system to drain itself out. Purpose of that would be if you're just leaving the unit for a while, don't want your water going stale or stagnant, you can drain it all out first. Or if you're getting ready to winterize the unit, you can just dump all that water out before pumping antifreeze through. Ahead from there, we got your sewer system. So that cap there just pulls out of there. And you can see it's got the same two ears that your sewer system had. So that'll attach the same way. Just press it on, give it that turn, clicks in. Left, you get a gray valve. On the right, you get a black. So that black valve is controlling your black tank. Gray valve is controlling your gray. Black tank is going to be filled from your toilets. That's going to be our dirtiest water. So we'll be dumping that first. Once that's done, you'll then come to the gray. Gray tank is going to be filled from your sinks as well as your showers. So typically cleaner water will dump that last to help keep that hose as clean as possible. Up top here, you get a black tank flush. So you may notice over time after having gone and dumped your black tank, your monitor panel is still reading a third or two thirds, whatever it may be. Typically, that's just some debris inside of your tank hanging between the probes, causing that misread. So what you're going to do is just take your water hose and plug it into there, open up that black valve and turn on the water, and that'll just flush out that tank, get rid of any sort of debris that could be causing that issue. Another step back and you get your power port here. So as you open that up, you're gonna find a little notch in the bottom corner there. It's gonna line up with this notch here. You press it in, give it a little eighth turn that locks it into place. Then you get the threaded collar there to really lock it down. Following the cord back, you're gonna find a standard 30 amp end there. Most campsites are gonna have that. You can just plug straight on in and you're good to go. We do also provide you with a 15 amp adapter. So if you're looking to plug in at home to charge your batteries or run your fridge, you've got the power to do so. Fresh water connection up here. So you're just gonna take your water hose and plug it into there, turn on the water and that fills up your fresh water tank. Down below that is your city water connection. So the same water hose will just plug into there, turn on the water, and that pressurizes the lines throughout the units. The fresh water tank drain is just that little white plug down there. So you just be unscrewing that cap, drains out the fresh water tank. Hot water tank here, so for that keyway, you're just gonna line it up and it pops on open. All of your controls for turning this guy on are just inside of the unit. Before we ever turn it on though, we just wanna hit that relief valve right there. Make sure that shot of water comes out. That bit of water coming out is just letting you know that tank is full, it's safe to fire it up and you're not going to burn anything out by doing so. Once we do get inside and fire it up with the propane, I will go over a reset procedure and the button that I'll refer to is just right here. Once we're done, we're just closing that back up, locking it down with the keyway, and there you go. And from there, we got the exhaust for your furnace, so if you're ever running your furnace, you just want to make sure it's not blocked off, it does get hot. Up from there, we got your stove vent, so you just got that flap there, you just want to open that up, make sure that our fan inside can evacuate any fumes. Of course, propane stove is putting off fumes whenever you're using it, so you want to make sure those are getting out. One end of your storage compartment here, so as that opens up, you get the magnetic latch, holds it open. Inside of here, you'll find your water hose. Inside of that, you'll find your park adapter, so your 15 amp to standard outlet, 30 amp short cord into here, and the compartment does just see straight through to the other side. Around front of the unit, we got your battery disconnect is just right back on the frame there, so just with it pointed up like that, that's it turned on counterclockwise and pull it out of there that's your battery then turned off so for storage you want that turned off any other time you're using the unit you want to make sure that's on battery itself is housed inside of this box here so as long as you're plugged in through that short cord in the back or your seven pin to your tow vehicle that battery is charging for you the propane tank is covered right up in here so basically if we just reach in the back you can get to that valve you can turn it to open it up And if you're looking to remove the cover completely, you just got four snaps in the back there. You can remove all those and it just slides on up. Standard tongue jack there, so one way's up, other way's down. On the side of the unit here, you do have a solar panel plug-in. So just a two-prong plug into there, charges your batteries. Other end of your storage compartment. So inside of here, back on that wall there, you'll find that little jack. So that's going to fit onto the end of all your stabilizers so you can run them in and out. Customers also opted to go with the weight distribution hitch, so we just got that stored in here for them as well. And inside of here, it's also just got a brake controller in there as well. Close that up. A couple of steps back and we get a GFI protected outlet here. So if you're looking to have coffee or toast outside, you got the power for it. Another step back, we get kind of your exterior kitchen here. So the magnetic latch holds it open again. You get your 120 volt fridge. So as long as you're plugged in, this fridge is going for you. On the right side here, you do have a USB outlet as well as a power outlet there. 
Just a little bit of storage space here. And then in the back of the units, we've got your exterior shower here. So you got a key just like this little guy there. You can stick it on in and open it up. You get the standard three foot head, or sorry, the three foot hose with the standard head, hot and cold water. So the dog's out getting muddy, can spray him off before he gets inside. Then we can close that back off, lock it back down. Then it's just your spare tire back here, and up from there we'll find your pre-wired mount for an observation camera. Now we'll make our way inside of the unit. So your assist handle just up 90 degrees, falls into place, then we can open up our door. Door is on a friction hinge, so it just kind of sits wherever you leave it. And I'll just point out real quick that if you have your door wide open, it does contact your awning arm. So if you're going to be using your awning, you only want your door at about 90 degrees or so. For your steps, you're going to grab that bottom one, pull it out, flip that last step over, then we can make our way inside. So first things first, when you get in here, you got your fire extinguishers just on the right, so that's standard. Pull the pin, point, and shoot. And then up on the wall here, you've got all of your light switches. It's the center, or sorry, far right there. Turns on your awning light outside. The switch on the left there does the light above your dinette. The rest of the lights throughout the unit are just on their own center push buttons. So then the switch in the bottom left there, it's your awning switch. So we press and hold the bottom, the top of that, it makes its way out. And once that awning's fully extended, we're gonna see a little white flap come down as well as the black of the metal tube. Once you see that, you're gonna to wanna to stop. If you're to continue extending, it will actually wind itself up backwards, in which case our fabric will then be underneath our tube, allowing it to then hold water, accelerating the growth of mold and mildew. So we'll see our flap right away here, there it is. And then we'll see the black tube. Once we see that, we stop. Now, if it were to start raining, it's of course gonna be holding some water anyway. So what you can do is grab either arm, front or rear, and you're just gonna pull down on it. Then you can see that changes the pitch of the awning out at the head, allowing water to then run off. Now, if you like that angle better, because it does give you more shade, you can do the same thing with the arm up front. Before we bring it back in though, we just wanna make sure these guys are back out straight and fully extended, just so we're not running the risk of bending anything. And then we'll press and hold the bottom of that switch and the awning will make its way back in. Again, we're just watching that our door's at 90 degrees or less. And another thing to keep in mind with your awning is it does catch a lot of wind. So once you get up to about 15, 20 kilometers an hour wind, you want to bring it back in. Again, just so that you're not running the risk of bending your arms. And once fully closed, that awning will just kind of have its electric motors lock itself in place and hold it firm against the side of the trailer. There we go. So. The red switch on the right there is your water heater. So as you turn that switch on, you get that little red light up there letting you know the ignition sequence will start. Once that sequence is started, that light will go out and it'll try that three times. If after the third try it hasn't fired up, it's at that point that that light will come on and it'll stay on. It's at that point, it'll be going and using that reset button that we've shown you. So on the far left there is your water pump switch. So as you turn that on, it turns on your water pump, drag out of your fresh tank to pressurize your lines. Up from there, we get your monitor system. So on the left, we got battery. So you can see we're currently C for charging. G would be good, F is fair, L is low. Your fresh tank, as you fill that up, you go a third, two thirds and full. Same idea for your black and your gray. And to your little kind of front, little storage area here. So you have the closet space on the side. Inside of there, you're gonna find that Bluetooth speaker as well as that binder there. So that binder has all of your owner's manuals, any keys, anything like that for the unit you'll find in there. You can see the unit is also pre-wired for solar, so if you were to go that route and have a proper solar panel and the charger installed, that's where your charger will be going, and the USB and the power outlet below it. Storage up top here. And then if you just took these cushions and laid them across the back, that is of course then your couch. For your bed, you're gonna flop those cushions down, undo our travel act on the side there, flip that base down, take the bed and bring it down with it. And there's your bed. Emergency exit on the side here. So you're just gonna be pulling that red tab to get rid of the screen. Take this handle here, throw it outside, hop on out. The TV backer right up here. So you got your power outlet for it, and then your antenna outlet is for it, for it is in the front there. Turning that antenna on, you just got that button there, turns on that green light, letting you know it is turned on. That will also help clear up your stereo signal. And then in the back, there's your cable and satellite outlet. Beside that, you can see our pre-wired for Wi-Fi and your smoke detectors up here as well. Down from there, you got your USB outlet as well as a power outlet. And then that little black box there is your LP detector. So propane's heavier than air, it'll sit on the floor. That guy will detect it and start going off just like a smoke detector would. 
Into the kitchen, we got your microwave up top here. It's a pretty standard, just like home. Down below that, we got your range vent. It's the light in the left, down on the right. So that's that fan that you want turned on whenever you're using your stove so that we're evacuating our fumes with that flap outside opened up. The bifold cover just flips on back. We're firing this guy up. We're going to turn on the knob. Then you can press it in, turn it over to high, and you see that automatic igniter just fires it up. No problem. You do have to have that button on to have your igniter work. Otherwise, you can see it just doesn't work. Right. Once we're done, just flipping it back down. A little bit of storage here. And then down below that is the outlet for your furnace. So one nice thing about this furnace is once it fires up, you can actually see the little flame glow and you'll see that little blue glow once we fire it up. The downside to this furnace is that it's just dumping all of its air right here. So if you're looking to move the air kind of forward and back, you're going to want to get yourself a fan just to help move that air around. Storage up top here, above the sink if you get a little light, center push button there. There's also a power outlet on the back wall. These sink covers are made of the same material as your counter. They are dual covers, hot and cold water of course, and the mobile head. A little bit of storage down below that. So if you're just being mindful of our drains and our water lines of course. And if you're looking to winterize the unit yourself, once it comes time, access to your hot water tank is behind this panel here. The water pump is behind this panel here. Each of these panels just have one little screw down in the center. You'd pull that out and you can get them out of the way. And we got your 12 volt fridge here. So this fridge is fully 12 volts. As long as your battery is charged or charging, this guy's going for you. Freezer up top, fridge down below. Temp selection just across the top there. Down from there, we got your converter. Just press the top and center and she pops on open. You get all of your breakers on the left side here. Whatever breaker breaks, it's gonna sit in the middle. So just turn it off and then back on to reset it. And then on the right side, there we get all of your fuses. So right behind me, we got your thermostat here. So with that, a slider all the way over to the left. That's it turned off. All the way over to the right is gonna be max heat. Anywhere in the middle is your temp selection. So that's what's turning on our furnace. And so now that we got the furnace going, I'll show you that little light there. Once it gets fired up. You can just see that blue glow there now. You get heat for about a minute or so. Temperature readouts just in the bottom there, lets you know where you're at. And then once you're done, you're just gonna slide it all the way over to the left until it clicks, and that turns it off. Storage above your dinettes here. And the dinette itself for the table, if you just kind of wiggle that up and out of the way, you can get it out of the legs. The legs will then come out of their bases. You'll lay down the legs. And then you have kind of the little ledge on either side for the dinette. You'll take the table and lay it down on that. Take the back cushions and fill in the table and create kind of another bedding area. Above our heads, we've got your air conditioner. So you get your two low fan settings, low fan and low fan. So that's just moving air. There's no cooling involved in that. High fan, of course, again, just moving air, no cooling involved. Once you get into that low cool, that's your low fan with cooling, and then high fan with cooling. Okay. Temp selection is right in the back here, so you will notice it does have the option for heat. The heat pump is not installed in this because we do have a dedicated furnace, so typically you're just going to be leaving that in max cool, unless of course you're looking to be a little bit warmer than max cool, but it is not going to heat. Right? Your bunk rooms, or your bunk spaces here, so pretty well identical, you get the one light up top, same thing down below, the one light up top, and then it's just kind of the doghouse storage down below it. As you come into the bathroom, you got the same sort of light, just on its own center push button, your medicine cabinets here, down below that is your hot and cold water, your sink of course, and then your GFI outlet test on the left, reset on the right. So if you ever have outlets that don't work, it's the first thing you should check. Then some storage down below that. Again, just mindful of our drains and our water lines. Then your toilet, as you flip that open, you got your flusher on the right side here. <clears throat> and straight up in the back by your shower, you got your roof vent. So you're just turning that knob to open it up. Button in the back there turns on the fan. Standard head and hose for the shower. And then of course, just the curtain here. I do believe that's about it for this little guy. If you've got any other questions on the unit, please feel free to give us a call 204-237-7272.